Hey, thank you so much for tuning into this week's video. We are going to talk about what a cap table is, why it is important for you to have one and also how to set one up in yeah, 10 minutes or less. So basically a cap table is a list of all the people who own shares in your company. So if you are just starting out, it's just you and your co-founders. But over time, if you're taking investor, investors on board or are incentivizing employees, more and more people will be getting shares in your company. And for you, it is important to have a cap table as a document that clearly shows the amount of shares that belong to a certain person, but also to have a sense on the ownership in the company. And for most startups, you can just simply set up the cap table in Google Sheets or Excel. But if it gets more complex over time, you can also use a dedicated tool for that. But in this example, we are going to take a look at the base templates cap table template that you can also download for free um, in the comments below. And I will explain how to set up a cap table in a few minutes and also give you a sense on the most important terms that you need to know. And yeah, let's just jump right in. Okay, so let's imagine we are going to create a new company. And we are two co-founders, so founder one and founder two. And because we are creating the company together, both of us will be getting the same amount of shares in the company. And let's imagine both of us get 20,000 shares in the company and we are going to invest 10,000 euros each to get the company off the ground. So... I just typed that in to my template here and as you can see the cap table is automatically generated and we can see we have two lines in the cap table and each of us has a 50% stake in the company and founder one will be the CEO and founder two will be the CTO and this is just um, a little side note here that makes it easier to understand the cap table later on but also if you share it with investors they know exactly um, who is uh, owning which percentage in the company and also who has which position in the company. Because we are thinking that it is important to incentivize our employees, we are also going to create an option pool for shares that we can give out to them besides their salary. So let's say option pool here and the position of the people who will get the shares uh, is employee. And there's no investment for the option pool, but the number of shares will be 5,000 in this example. So we just created our first cap table of our company. So two shareholders, the two founders and the option pool here. And the option pool is 11% and both of the, our uh, founders has have 44% in the company. The share type is common shares and I will explain that later on because this is also really, really important to know. Now we are getting started with our company. The company is growing. So at some point we decide, hey, we want to raise money from investors. And we are starting with a pre-seed round here. Pre-seed round is in most cases the first round of funding for a company. And we are taking on board John Doe um, as an example here as a position angel investor. And then we are taking a second investor on board that is Jane Doe. And her position is also angel investor. So that is it is clearly shown in the cap table which of the people are actually working in the company and which of the people in the cap table are actually investors. Both of them are investing 100,000 um, US dollars inside of our company. And we are going to put that down. And the amount of shares is determined also by the valuation that we agree with these angels. So in our case, we agree on a $4 million pre-money valuation here. And that means the angels are getting 1,125 shares in the company. So around 2% per person. And now one thing really interesting um, is happening. We are going to have the column here that shows the investment. And also we see that the share price of all the shares in our company is increasing because in the beginning um, we were just starting out and investing ten thousand dollars each into the company so the share price was really really low but at the current valuation the share price is obviously way higher now 
and the share price is calculated by the pre-money valuation and then the total numbers of shares. So share price 89, new shares issued to the Bose Angels 2,250. And now something interesting happens because we have different share classes. And you as a founder will always have common shares, but also the um, shares that will be issued to your employees will be common shares. Um, but the angels or investors in general, they can negotiate preferred shares and we are going to change the share type here. And now I'm going to explain you what the difference is between common shares and preferred shares. So, as you can imagine, investors want to limit their potential downside in the company because if they are investing hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions, they are having most of the risk inside the company because you as a founder only invested 10K, for example, or in some cases, um, not even money at all. And so they are negotiating preferred shares and preferred shares means that they have certain privileges that are attached to these shares. And the most yeah, common examples for these are anti-dilution policies or clauses and liquidation preferences. Meaning, if a company is sold or liquidated in, in the case that the company isn't running well, the investors will always get the money first back before you as a founder will get any kind of money. So let's imagine we are going to sell the company in a fire sale for 200,000 US dollars. And you have negotiated a liquidation preference with your angels that says, okay, 1x liquidation preference. So they will be getting $200,000 back. So their investment that they have here and you will getting nothing. Um, because, nevertheless, you have 42% in the company. And all of these different clauses can be negotiated in your fundraising journey but this is really really common to have the preferred shares and also these different share classes and you can also have different share classes for every round of funding that you are doing also one quick word about um, anti-dilution protection that means if an investor is investing for example in a pre-seed round at a four million dollar valuation and you are raising at a lower valuation in the next round they will be getting new shares to um, yeah have the same terms as the next investor is getting but i've also a separate video on anti-dilution clauses and also fundraising terms in general but let's take a look at our cap table that we have now after our pre-seed round so we have the founders here we have two angels and now we can see it's still 100 percent stake in the company but our stake as a founder was diluted from 44% to 42% and now we are ready for the next round of funding. Most of the cases this is a seed round and now we would be taking VC1 on board and the position would be venture, uh, venture capital for example and they would be investing 2 million into the company and the share type that they have is seed preferred shares. So it, it's not always the same kind of like privileges that you get in the pre-seed round or in the seed round. And in most cases, the investors that come last get their money back um, at first. So you as a founder will be the last one to get any kind of money. And as you can see, now the cap table evolves a little bit. We always have this kind of like diagram that shows the ownership and our ownership was diluted from 34% to from 42% to 34% and the new venture capital fund has 20% in the company the company the seed round was um, negotiated at an 8 million dollar pre-money valuation so post money with the 2 million invested will be 10 million and as you can see the share price is steadily increasing over time um, and the new shares that have, have been issued were uh, around 11.8k shares. Now we can do the same for the Series A or Series B round, and it's always like the same logic. You will be adding new investors, new lines to your cap table, and in the end you want to have this kind of document as a way to understand who owns which percentage in your company. 
And in our template, we have also a big cap table here in the summary. So on the one hand, you can see how the ownership in the company changes over time, but also the increase of the share price over time. And in the end, you can see how your cap table develops over time. And let's imagine you are going to sell your company at a really nice amount at some point. You can then take a look at your cap table and see the exact ownership of everyone in the company. So if we are selling the company after series B for let's imagine 100 million and we own 34% in the company, um, as a founder, we are possibly getting uh, 34 million as an exit proceed. But this obviously depends a little bit on the different yeah, clauses or privileges that you have in your preferred shares. Um, yeah, and this was a 10 minute walkthrough on what a cap table is, how you can build one yourself. As I mentioned, you can download this template in the links below on base templates and if you have any questions around cap tables, just put them in the description in the comments below and I will answer them in a new video.